Okay, in this uh, time-lapse demonstration, I'm going to show you how to model um, a model from this uh, game called Air Rivals. Okay, the first model you saw just now was a subdivided model, but uh, I won't be showing that in this uh, demonstration, probably in a future video. In this uh, time-lapse, I'll be showing you how to use the uh, mesh editing tools to model a low polygon uh, model. So what I'm doing right now is I'm importing a uh, image as a plane. So the image, the first image I imported was the wrong one. So I imported a second image which I have prepared from screen captures uh, provided by uh, one of my viewers, Chris. And uh, he had this request for me to show him how to model this particular model. So uh, these image references aren't exactly accurate as they were taken with a orthographic view. So, but they, they are still useful as references. So I'm using them to create a, a model that is close to the design of this uh, screen capture. So what I'm doing right now is that I've just imported the image plane and I'm uh, editing each individual plane and uh, deleting the sections uh, or the, in, the parts which I don't need. So uh, I'm just leaving one with the bottom view so I can use that as a reference. Now if you have a good uh, 3D uh, model 3D view or tree views. Okay, you can uh, you can skip this process, or if it makes it easier for you, you can just uh, delete the uh, the views that you don't need. Okay, what I'm doing now is that I've just created a cube, applied a mirror modifier, deleted the other half, and turn on uh, clipping. So I've just scaled the uh, the cube, and uh, I've also changed the the view of the cube into wire mode, and uh, so if you have seen my previous videos before, um, the techniques are, are pretty much the same. Okay, You start off with a very, very low resolution model and uh, you just keep on adding detail. So you just subdivide it, extrusion, just extrude uh, certain faces. So in this case, I'm now inserting an edge loop. Okay, I'm pulling out a section which I think will uh, be good as the wing. Okay, so I inserted another edge loop so that uh, I have uh, more detail especially if you're modeling aircraft, the cross section of the wing must have a uh, airfoil shape. So that's why I'm giving it a little bit more uh, subdivisions. Okay, so giving it a uh, sort of a, a lens shape, okay, a curved shape, the curved uh, upper surface. Okay, so now I'm just uh, tapering the wing so that it matches the, uh, the shape, the general shape of the model. And because we are not doing subdivision on this model here, um, I'm just basically extruding sections so that it matches the reference till I see fit. Okay, and as I mentioned, the reference images are not exactly accurate since it was taken with a orthograph, uh, or rather perspective camera view. Okay, so um, it doesn't have the exact dimensions. So I'm just using these uh, images as a guide. As, as far as I know, the, uh, the top view of this image is uh, fairly accurate. So I'm using that as the, the main guide. Okay, so here I have some distortion on my wing tip. So I've changed the view okay, on, of my viewport so that I can scale it according to the view. And of course, you have to remember to change it back to global. So for some of you, you might find that this method of modeling is a bit confusing okay some of you might just prefer to model in the uh, tree view orthographic views uh, all the time but um, trust me this method if you can figure out the model while in 3d mode and then using the uh, the manipulators the global in global mode you can model really really quickly and okay over here I just extruded a section and then I selected the faces and I scale along the global x-axis to flatten them okay that section is actually the lower uh, jet intakes and then there's the chin jet intake which I simply select two faces and then just pull them down and I highly recommend that you uh, memorize and master the shortcut keys for blender because it really speeds up your productivity when you're modeling uh, for your information, this model took me about half an hour to model. Uh, if you are modeling something like a subdivided, uh, more detailed model, you will uh, take around two hours, okay? Because you need to take note of the edge loops. Uh, if I were to subdivide this with a modifier, now it would not look 
um, the shape, the general shape uh, will will be smoothed out. So the final result won't look very good. So for subdivided models, uh, you need to have more. I mean, you need to put in more effort uh, to get the shape correct. So for this low polygon model, uh, it's just a matter of inserting um, edge loops, okay, cutting, or just inserting or extrusions to to get the shape correct. Okay, so now I'm tapering the tail. And you notice that I switch between solid and uh, wire mode. Okay, so it, when I switch to wire mode, I can see the reference behind. So I can use it to uh, use it as a reference to uh, position my vertices and edges and so on. Okay, right now I'm at the tail section. Notice the side view of the reference is not exactly accurate. So I'm just using the uh, top view of this. Uh, this screen grab as a, a main reference. So right now I'm extruding the root of the tail fin. Again, I make sure that I have enough uh, sections right to create a again a, a convex uh, look. All right, I'm trying to match the uh, the shape of the tail plane, the vertical stabilizer as much as I can. Okay, as I extrude, I also make sure that I scale it down to take give it a tapered look. Okay, so do the same thing for the root. And I notice there's a section that is sticking out from the plane. So right now I'm just inserting edge loops so that I have enough detail to pull out uh, this, I assume is an antenna port. Okay, as I approached uh, this uh, section here, what I did was I applied a smooth on the left hand side under the mesh tools so to give the uh, the model a slightly smooth look um, and what you see here is that I've uh, switched to isolated mode so it's the uh, forward slash key on the number pad so that it effectively just isolates the model that you're working on so it hides the references so if you want the reference to come back again remember to press forward slash again okay right now I'm using a tool called smooth all right, so I select the group of vertices which are very straight and I just apply several levels of smooth to give it a more rounded look. And um, as you can see, I'm now just moving the vertices, just tweaking it to give it a more rounded definition. And when I came to the tail section, I was uh, deciding, hmm, should I select these faces and then pull out the, uh, the elevator, the, the stabilizer? And later I realized that um, it wasn't doing much. I mean, it, it became a bit difficult for me to get the shape right. So in the end, I changed my changed my mind and I decided to undo. And I decided to create a cube. I selected one of the vertex. I shifted the cursor to that location. And I pressed Shift-A to create a cube. Okay, and then I um, inserted an edge loop. I deleted half of the cube. So they only got half of this cube here. And uh, because I created this cube while in edit mode, it is part of this model. I just inserted another edge loop here and then created that general convex shape. Okay. And very, very quickly created the, uh, the elevator section. Okay. Or the, the whole moving stabilizer, stabilator. Okay. Just drew a box and then over the vertices and scale them accordingly. And based on the reference, the uh, stabilizer is actually rotated down about 60 degrees. And uh, I used the cursor position as the rotation axis and just rotated it down. Okay, I duplicated the uh, stabilizer and then move it to the front and to be used as the four planes of this model. Okay, so that I don't have to uh, remodel it over again because the shape is uh, very similar. Okay, so because uh, the number of uh, vertices are very low, I can tweak this very, very easily. Okay, I'm using my border select tool to just uh, select the vertices and move them around. Okay, so now the uh, four plane is done. So now what I'm uh, doing here is I'm inserting more edge loops on the wing so that I can uh, tweak the shape 
to get the shape of the wing to look like my reference model. Okay, again, as you can see, because this uh, image reference was taken at a perspective view, so the proportions are a little bit distorted. So you have to use your own judgment to if you're using these references. But of course, if you're using accurate tree view drawings, then there's not a big problem. And one note of advice is that if you get uh, tree view uh, drawings, make sure that they are accurate. That means the length, the width, the height. Uh, matches the uh, all the tree views before you use them. So you can always verify by measuring it in either GIMP or Photoshop. Okay, notice that I, I turned the switch on the viewport so that the uh, detail behind the mesh is not uh, viewable so that I only select the faces that is viewable. Okay, basically I just pulled, uh, selected a, a couple of faces uh, under the, the wing which form the engine port right below the wing area there and I just extrude a section out and of course uh, there's an intake there so I just create the uh, the front nozzle just extrude a couple of times and then just pull it in okay and then the rear nozzle I select a couple of faces and then I apply a scale along the y-axis to flatten it with zero and then I extrude another small section to give a small nozzle sticking out and I re-extrude inwards to give the uh, look of a nozzle and essentially the uh, low polygon model is uh, pretty much done. Okay, of course you can tweak it further uh, to make it uh, to look nicer. So I've hidden the reference, I rendered it and it looks quite alright. And basically that's how you do it.